Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to uh, share with you the, the latest results of the evolution trial. Evolution trial was a trial uh, uh, with Watchman device in uh, patients uh, with mostly contraindications for oral anticoagulation. <coughs> we know from the ESC guidelines that the platelet inhibi inhibition is ineffective in uh, patients for stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation and therefore uh, we should give the patients oral anticoagulation or we can give as a 2B a recommendation the patient an LAA closure device uh, for those patients who are contraindicated for a long-term uh, oral anticoagulation. We know that this device is effective. We know this from the PROTECT AF and the PREVAIL trials that were randomized trials for uh, versus uh, oral anticoagulation mostly with warfarin and it was shown a non-inferiority of the device uh, comparing to the drug. And we know for contraindicated patients in a small cohort of patients, 150 patients from the ASAP trial, um, that LAA closure is also safe and efficient in those patients uh, with a strategy post-implantation with aspirin and a clobetoquil. But this was a very small trial and therefore uh, we decided to do the evolution registry. It was a uh, prospective registry, uh, all comers registry with uh, mostly contraindicated patients with Watchman implantations. Uh, and we wanted to uh, look on the safety after one year and the efficacy also after one year. And uh, now I want to share with you the data from the subgroup that uh, has taken dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, after the device was implanted. You can here see uh, how the uh, trial was conducted. We had 1,025 patients that uh, undersigned the informed consent and of these 1,025 patients, 605 patients were uh, in the dubbed group. This was at, at the discretion of the operator. We decided this patient can get warfarin, this patient can get NOAC and those patients uh, only can get dual antiplatelet therapy. And 605 uh, of those patients were on the dual antiplatelet therapy. And we have follow-up data of 88% of those patients after one year. We have 87% of the patients with a TOE after uh, the implantation procedure, so that I can share the data with you. You see here, the elf months follow-up was available in 90% of the patients and a lot of patients were very old, more th older than uh, 80 years. The most patients, 84%, were contraindicated patients. We, those patients had a very high CHATS-WAS score of 4.7 in mean and uh, also the HASPLAT score was 2.4, so also a very high bleeding risk cohort, 98-89% uh, of the patients where a just was score of more than three or equal than three that means a very high risk for stroke so we had a high risk cohort of uh, for stroke uh, and we had a high risk uh, cohort for bleeding we had a follow-up TE as I said in 87 percent and what we have seen is that there was a thrombus formation on the device Usually it was 45 days after the implantation. Uh, in 4% of the patients, 22 uh, patients had a thrombus on the device and one patient suffered from a stroke or TIA uh, of those uh, 22 patients. In 21 patients, nothing happens. The most patients were without thrombus. You can, you can see when uh, was the dubbed uh, discontinued. In the most patient, 237 uh, within the range of zero and three months, usually after the follow-up uh, at six weeks. Another big cohort was uh, cancelled after three months or after six months. And uh, you see the switch was mainly uh, done from dual antiplatelet therapy to a single antiplatelet therapy in 71 uh, percent of the of the patients as you can see here 
uh, 17% stayed in dual antiplatelet therapy, uh, 5% got NOAX or uh, oral anticoagulation. So I guess that these were the patients with the thrombus on the device, and 17% uh, 7 has uh, after discontinuation nothing. Here you, you can see uh, the Kaplan Meyer curve, and you can see here after 45 days there are a lot of patients stopped it to do an antiplatelet therapy also after three months and after six months here uh, there was a stop in dual antiplatelet therapy. Let's have a look on the bleeding events. So what we have seen is we have 2.5 percent bleedings uh, in the patients with a dual antiplatelet therapy. This is not much when you compare it to aspirin alone. When you look on the old data from aspirin we know that aspirin alone has uh, bleeding events of 2 to 2.5%. When we uh, see, when we exclude the, the bleeding events that happens due to the procedure during the implantation or after the implantation, bleeding events in the groin, then we have a bleeding rate of 2.1% uh, and we have four patients that died from fatal bleeding. So this is a risk that we have and that we know. When we look on the safety of the LAA occluder, so we can see that there were a lot of uh, patients without any event, 69%. The most patients had events that were not related, unrelated uh, to, to the device. There were 5% of related events um, and 0.3% of that of unknown cause, so that means we have events like coronary artery disease events, we have uh, events from uh, renal function, infections, uh, from the atrial fibrillation itself. We had also major bleeding events, heart failure events and pulmonary events. But the main cause of the events were not related to the device itself. So when we compare the bleeding events that we have measured to the expected bleeding events uh, from the Hesplat score, you can see we have expected a ble uh, bleeding event rate of 5.1% and we could reduce with the dual antiplatelet therapy after Watchman implantation the event rate to 2.5% uh, so that means a risk reduction of 52%. When we exclude the procedural uh, events then we have a reduction of 60%. Let's have a look on the ischemic stroke rate. So we had also uh, ischemic strokes in uh, those cohort, 1.4% of uh, strokes and 1.8% of stroke TIA or systemic embolism. Uh, no hemorrhagic stroke, no fatal stroke, one stroke with uh, uh, dis disabling, one disabling stroke in this cohort. And you can see from the Kaplan-Meier curve that these strokes occurred over the whole year uh, of follow-up. Compared to the Chats-Wask score of the patient, we have expected a stroke rate within one year of 7.5% and we have observed a stroke rate of 1.4%, so this means an 81% reduction in the Watchman dual antiplatelet uh, cohort. Uh, or when you take also the TIA and the uh, systemic embolism uh, together with the stroke rate, then we have a 83% reduction in this cohort. Also when we compared the uh, cohort that we have observed here, the DUPT group, uh, with patients from the uh, apixaban aristotle trial, uh, where they compared apixaban versus warfarin, you can see we are in the range of the low uh, dose of apixaban in these patients that had a jets score of more than three. So in the high risk cohort, uh, we have observed a stroke rate of 1.6% in uh, with Epixabon 1.5% and with Warfarin, as you can see here, of uh, there were 2% of strokes. So here we also in the range of Epixabon. So let me conclude our data. The data have shown that after one year uh, of outcome, data following a LAA closure with the Watchman device find a safety profile like uh, a very low 
uh, safety profile uh, that is comparable with other left atrial uh, procedures. The bleeding rate with DAP is most uh, is the most relevant uh, SIA, SAA. But what do we have for uh, alternatives? So I believe uh, we have to give the patients something after the implantation of the device so we can give them oral or new oral anticoagulation uh, or dual antiblader therapy but to give the patient nothing or only aspirin I believe this is not a, a solution. So we ha don't have any alternative. The effi efficacy regarding stroke prevention is in this high uh, risk mostly oral uh, anticoagulation in eligible patient cohort is similar to randomized trials with uh, the eligible patients and the stroke rate in uh, evolution DAP subgroup uh, is similar to as Aristotle subgroup uh, with a high chet score and uh, the 2016 ESC guidelines uh, on atrial fibrillation recommending LA closure for patients contraindicated for adequate NOAC therapy were supported by the data that I have shown you now. The next slide uh, I, I don't have on the computer because we have a recommendation from the company. Last week we get uh, the, the letter that uh, these data help the company to um, change the IFU of the device and now we are able with a new IF IFU to decide if the patient can get after watchman therapy NOAC or do antiplatelet therapy or warfarin. This is allowed now. We are also allowed to give the patient only three months dual antiplatelet therapy. And uh, the last thing that is now allowed uh, and this is legal is that we can stop aspirin after one year if there's no other indi indication uh, for aspirin like coronary artery disease, uh, then we can stop aspirin uh, after 12 months. Thank you very much.